When seeking to understand ourselves as knowers, values and culture are fundamental to our identities. Moreover, integral to this is the knowledge we have or our world view. Reflecting on the interrelationship of shared and personal knowledge, values are really attitudes and standards held by individuals and cultures. We learn from other people and therefore our perspectives, values and knowledge is moulded and influenced by the cultures we spend time and identify with. Therefore, values are shared so that individuals influence those of a culture and vice versa. The characteristic of philosophical certainty can be attached to those knowledge claims that are not influenced by values, culture or perspectives. For example, mathematical knowledge claims have this quality. They are logically or necessarily certain. Therefore, we can describe them as absolutely objective knowledge claims. We may loosen this description of objectivity to include claims that although not logically or necessarily certain, are widely regarded as valid. Natural sciences provides excellent examples for these. Since these claims are contingent, they depend on the evidence for their validity, but are nonetheless objective. For example, the claims that water boils at 100 degrees and that trees consume carbon dioxide, these are not necessarily or absolutely certain, yet they are supported by good experimental data and valid theories and explanation. So although they don't have this philosophical certainty, they are nonetheless objective. However, we may even go a little bit further and claim that the methodologies which scientific knowledge and knowledge production are based are never completely free from values and culture. Perhaps most obviously, moral value systems enter into scientific research, especially in terms of experimentation, for example, animal testing. However, at a deeper level and linking strongly to the optional unit, knowledge and indigenous knowledge, conflict between Western science and indigenous knowledge systems often arrive from differences in terms of fundamental values and worldviews. These differences are particularly evident today when it comes to agriculture and environmental systems. Perhaps then the basic tenets of reasonableness, explanatory and predictive power, simplicity and coherence, these values can be interpreted differently by scientists from different cultures. Moreover, within one culture, there can also be disagreements between individual scientists owing to a difference of how these values are understood and applied. Michael Polanyi, a chemist, argued that it's impossible for knowers to remove themselves completely from the world that surrounds them. Thus, knowledge by association is inextricably linked to the values and cultures in which they participate. Polanyi's argument links perception and interpretation to the idea that we as knowers are always active in the construction of perception or experience of the world around us. Perception being a product of raw sense data and how our mind organizes and understands this due to mind dependent concepts, methodologies, past experiences and values. Therefore, values are fundamental to the paradigms within which knowledge claims are made. In an effort to explain values a little further, I'm going to refer to ethics and the arts. When we want to say that a movie, a book, a piece of music or a painting is good, we are expressing a value judgment that we like that particular artwork. However, this term goodness carries with it many other positive connotations. 
For example, that the artwork might express a strong emotion, reveal some universal truths about the world, or it is simply aesthetically pleasing. It just looks good to us. It's beautiful. You might respond that these judgments are nothing more than subjective opinion. However, when we claim that a film is moving or a piece of music is harmonious or a novel reveals some universal truths about the world, we are attempting to justify our artistic judgments by appealing to shared standards. In this sense, we are moving our artistic judgments from extreme subjectivity more towards an objective criteria. This means that artistic judgments are not purely subjective. The notion that value judgments are more than mere subjective opinion is perhaps more obvious when it comes to ethics. One ethical theory, emotivism, claims that ethical judgments really are no more than subjective opinion. So when I say murder is wrong or helping people in need is good, I am merely expressing my personal preference. For this, the theory is sometimes called the boo hooray theory. Such ethical claims containing the terms good and bad, right and wrong, are not merely about expressing a subjective opinion. They also have embedded in them commands which are applicable to everybody. This idea is brought into focus when we recognize that ethical values and standards are shared by many people in a culture and indeed from one culture to another. For example, the claim that property rights should be respected is found in cultures all over the world. So, despite emotivism having a strong claim for there being no moral truth, this being a mere expression of a subjective view, the alternative view is that ethical codes, even though there are value statements, also have a strong sense of objectivity. It's possible to apply this understanding of objectivity being informed by the shared opinion even to the natural sciences. For example, peer review, even though it is dependent on experimental data, is also about the consensus view of the scientific community supporting a particular study or knowledge claim. Referring again to paradigms, this time to the work of Thomas Kuhn, knowledge in the natural sciences rests upon a value system that comprises a conceptual schema or framework composed of shared concepts, techniques and methodologies plus criteria of what counts as valid evidence and justification. Therefore, despite a new paradigm solving the problems of the old, different paradigms cannot be judged against one another. There is no way of saying, for example, electrons are part of reality without relying on the particulars of the paradigm. The outcome of this view is one, there is no theory neutral, two, concepts take their meaning from their paradigm, and evidence and justification are paradigm dependent. In terms of values and culture, mathematics as an area of knowledge is really the odd one out. Yes, it is true that peer review is an important part of knowledge production in mathematics, and a great example is when Andrew Wiles proposed his solution to Fermat's last theorem. Through peer review, an error was found, which was eventually checked and amended. However, that peer review was not about gaining a shared opinion or approval from the mathematics community. Rather, it was finding and amending the error in the calculation. This is because mathematics knowledge claims gain their justification and explanation from the pure mathematics logic itself. In that way, mathematics has a very strong objectivity and it makes it an extremely powerful way of thinking. In conclusion, subjectivity and objectivity are linked to the interconnected nature of shared and personal knowledge. Values and culture 
very much depend on us as knowers and they influence in most of the areas of knowledge how that knowledge is interpreted and understood. However, since our values are shared in cultures, our values are also shared with many other people. Moreover, many of the methodologies, concepts and techniques involved in knowledge production, even in the more objective natural sciences, are also influenced by value judgments.